I was following me, 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 I was following the pack, all swallowed in their coats with scarves of red tied round their throats to keep their little heads from falling in the snow. inspired me to think about becoming a knight in many years ago. Now, um, I'm too old to wear the armor, and my son Carl is wearing it, and he's taking over for me. And so I'm going to have him take the oath of the knight that I took 25 years ago. So he's going to recite that for you now. I will be loyal of hand and mouth. I will be loyal of hand and mouth. And serve every man as best I may. Serve every man as best I may. I will seek the fellowship of good men. I will seek the fellowship of good men. Hearken to their words. Hearken to their words. And remember them. And remember them. I will be humble. I will be humble. And courteous. And courteous. Wherever I go. Wherever I go. Boasting not. Boasting not. Nor talking over much. Nor talking over much. Neither being dumb altogether. I will be dumb altogether. I will look to it that no lady, I will look to it that no lady, or damsel, or damsel, be in reproach, be in reproach, through my default, through my default, nor any woman of whatsoever quality, nor any woman of whatsoever quality. And if I fall into the company, and if I fall into the company, where men speak, where men speak, this worshipfully, this work, this work, this worshipfully, of any woman, of any woman, I will show, I will show, by gracious words, by gracious words, that it pleaseth me not, that it pleaseth me not, and depart, and depart. The office of a knight is to maintain and defend the holy faith, and to honor and multiply the faith which has suffered in this world many travails, despites <coughs> and anguish death. This was taken from the 12th century oath of office of anyone that would like to be a knight. And if you would like to be a knight in America, you first of all have to get your body in condition to wear a suit of armor, have a suit of armor made, take the ancient oath of a knight, and you may serve in America as a knight. Without an interesting name, the armadillo went like this. <laughs> That's not, not only not an interesting name, it's a strange, silly name. You need a better name than that. Well, I know, but I can't think of one. Well, I'll tell you what. There's a named dragon way over on the other side of the forest. Here's one of his claws that fell off. Arma Mama. Yeah, that's my name. And she said, now you pick a name. I don't see any names. I don't see any for me. And all of a sudden, the dragon saw them peeking around. The tree opened its big mouth and came down and swallowed Arma Mama right down in his smoky throat. And Sir Queen said, what kind of a night am I? I didn't even pull my sword and now... Our mom is in the belly of that dragon. Wait a minute. I'm thinking of something, what I can do. This is what he did. He stood out from behind the tree, 
And he said, you stinky dragon, why don't you try to swallow me? And the dragon said, all right, I will. He opened his big mouth and came down and picked Carl up inside his mouth. But Carl took that sword and between the teeth of that dragon so it couldn't close his mouth. And he reached down in the throat of that dragon and pulled Arma Mama right out by her tail and threw her on the grass. And she started to cry. Oh, Arma Mama, did you get hurt? No, I didn't get hurt. My armor protected me. But when I was in the valley of the dragon, I got so excited, all four of my little babies popped out of me. And now they're in the belly of the dragon. Oh. back up in the dragon's mouth, his sword was still stuck there, and he grabbed a hold of the tail of Arma Willy, Arma Billy, Arma Emma, Arma Ursula, threw him over on the grass, and they were all okay. But just then, the dragon was able to spit his sword out of his mouth and bit on Carl, Sir Queen, over and over again, biting on his armor, bang, bang, bang. Well, pretty soon, the dragon has broken off all his teeth because he has hard armor. And so Sir Queen jumped out of the dragon's mouth, grabbed him by the tail, hurled him around, and threw him down in the river. And he drowned because he didn't know how to swim. The beehive, and he stuck it up in there very gently and carefully. And he got some honey on the end of it, and he came back, and he picked up the broken pieces of eggshell, rubbed it in the honey, and glued the whole eggshell back together again. There was one more piece he had to glue on the top. And he was about to glue it there. And Humpy said, wait, wait, no, 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 not yet. Why not? Because look at all that, all that yellow stuff on the ground. That's my yolk. you you got to pick it up. I don't have a bucket or anything. Well, you can use your helmet. Now, Carl's not going to take his helmet off right now. But Sir Quain did. He took off his helmet, scooped up all that yellow yolk, poured it into Humpty Dumpty's eggshell, put the last piece on there, and said, there you go, Humpty, all together. No, I'm not. My eyeball. They're over there behind that tree. And so Sir Quain got the eyeball, glued them on, got his nose, stuck it on there, and he said, and here's your mouth, stuck it on there. What about ears? Do you have ears? Humpty said, of course I have ears. What do you think I'm listening to you with? Well, where are they? Well, they were over there by my nose. And they're gone. Well, somebody might, wait a minute. Look at that squirrel up in the tree. Those big ears on that little head of his. Are those your ears? Yes, they are. He stole my ears. I'll go talk to him. So Sir Queen went over and said, uh, Mr. Squirrel, you look kind of funny with those big ears on that little head of yours. And the squirrel said, I don't funny. I don't like them funny. He took the ears off, threw them on the ground, and Sir Queen glued them on the Humpty Dumpty, and then found his little stick-like legs and put them on there, his little stick-like arms, and Humpty Dumpty jumped up on the wall and started to sing this song. Sir Queen said, wait a minute. You said if I put you back together again, you would tell me where I can get an interesting name. Now, where is that place? Well, I, I lied. I didn't know any place like that. I just wanted you to put me together. You lied to a knight? Well, yes. <laughs> and Humpty Dumpty looked at uh, Sir Queen's sword and was worried he might be busted to pieces. And so he went like this. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe I can think of something. Oh, yeah. Okay, here's what you do. You climb up on top of my wall. You look down on the other side, and the children come, and they write all kinds of interesting names all over my wall. You can get one from there. Wayne went to get on his horse, got on his horse, he was about to ride away, and the bees came out of the beehive. And they smelled Humpty Dumpty glued together with all that honey. And they swarmed around Humpty Dumpty. And they were mad as hornets, those bees were. And they knocked Humpty Dumpty right off the wall and splat on the ground he was again.